Let's imagine that we have a CPU and we have instructions that are eight bits. Let's say the instruction that we pull in is one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Zero. What I want to simulate in the circuit is how do we decode this to send it to the different sub circuits or subroutines that will implement this. So if we turn on its side and we connect up these values, then we can see that we can sort of pull from here. We've essentially turned this instruction register sort of into a bus or a, a circuit that's going to communicate each of the lines. And then what we're going to do, or what I'm thinking we're going to do, basically put all of the implementations here. So let's say this is the implementation for add. And let's say this is the implementation for move. And let's say this is the implementation for subtract. Totally arbitrary. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to pull from here. Let's say that add had a very short code. Let's say the rest of this is maybe part of the argument or some kind of modified uh, bit. So let's say add was going to be the code 101. So what we'll do is we'll take our instruction, right, which in this case is 101. So this is going to be an add instruction. And he's going to just take all of these three. And the idea is that he wants the first bit to be a one, which it is. So that's going to go straight into a gate. He wants the second bit to be a zero. So we're going to invert this one. I think there's a circle here, maybe. And then this one, we also want it to be a one because it's one zero one he's looking for, right? So we got a one here as well. And if we could put this into a gate where if this and this and this, then it registers. In this case, move maybe would be, let's say it's uh, one, one, zero. So in this case, this guy also will get them. And he's also going to check these three to see if it passes his, his test. And sub is going to do the same thing. So I want to test this out. So if we're going to do it with three bits, then we do need to, of course, have our breadboard. And we need to have three inputs to simulate the instruction register. So these are our three bits, right? Uh, this is the most significant bit. This is the least significant bit, we'll say for this example. And we need to power them up. All right, so these three have power, although this guy's missing. And now what we need to do is pretty much have our implementation here. So in the case of 101 for add, which is what we had here, we need the first bit to be checked if it's a one, the second bit to be checked if it's a zero, the third bit to be checked if it's a one. This guy can go in directly. This one needs to be inverted because we want to see if it's a zero. So we're going to invert his signal. And then this one is going to be a one. So to do that, I'll probably use a logic chip that I've been using in the last couple of videos, thanks to Eric Vincent to simplify the implementation. So this one is exclusive or I don't need that one. This one's an or gate. I don't need that one either in this case. NAND gate. This is a D flip flop. So where's my AND gate? Okay, this one we'll need. This is an inverter. So this one I'll keep. Okay, here the end gates. So the reason I get these, of course, is to know the code 74 LS04 and 74 LS08. So this one is 04 and this one is 08. So we have our AND gate and our inverter. So I'm going to put the inverter in here and then I'm going to put in the AND gate. So the idea is if this one is one and this one is zero and this one is one, then we want it to trigger some sort of LED that will indicate some adding operation. And maybe later on we can add on to it. So we know that zero needs to be flipped to a one in order to pass a an AND gate. So we're going to have to wire this into the hex inverter, which I don't really know how the pins look, actually. I know it has a lot of inverters in here. This is how they are. So I guess this is input and then output, input, output, input, output, right. So it just inverts it. It inverts ones to zeros and zeros to ones. And the idea is that these will these three bits of the instruction are going to go into multiple gates for each operation that could go ahead if, if the password is right, so to speak. So what we need to do is hook up the, the zero and invert that to a one. So what we can do real quick is test the output with a resistor and an LED. This is our output right there from the inverter. And we'll make sure that the LED is on by default, showing that it's inverting it properly. So now we just need to connect up our power. Uh, I think power is connected here already. So we need to connect power to this chip and then we need to ground it. And then we also need to pull down the input so that when we're not pressing the button, it's not floating. It's, it's a hard zero. So let us just connect in a pull down resistor to the input. All right. I think this looks pretty good. So we're, right now, only this button is connected. And it's supposed to show the LED on by default. And then when we click the button, it should turn off, which inverts the signal, obviously, right? When the button is pressed, you'd expect the LED to turn on. But in this case, it should turn. It should be on by default. So let's uh, connect power. OK, LED is on by default. Click the button, it turns off. Perfect. So this is working as an inverter. So now we, just need, we need to connect up our the other buttons here. So we have our AND gate, and our AND gate has two inputs and an output, two inputs and an output going across the chip. So for the add operand, we need to put basically the output of our inverter as an input into one of the gates. We'll just keep sending operands forward. So our middle button is going to, our middle bit, we could say, is going to come in, turn into a one, and then it's going to go into our AND gate and be compared with these other buttons. So we need to still do that part. So this button can go straight into this AND gate as the other operand. And then the output can go into the next AND gate with this button. So in this case, we'll be checking all three with this AND gate, but flipping the zero 
right? Because it needs to be a one to pass the and check. So that's the idea. So uh, we need to connect this guy down here, which is kind of a long wire. So we have uh, the most significant bit going into this AND gate because we want it to be a one for the add operation. This guy is zero. So we're going to flip him to a one so that this pa this AND gate will only show true if this is a one and this is a zero. And we can test that real quick. Let's test it in parts. So I'm going to put this resistor here for the output and put an LED in and we could just test it real quick. Make sure it's working as intended. We need to power up this gate first and ground him. All right, let's plug it in and see. So he's on by default, which is not quite right. Because right now we have a one here, a zero here, and a zero here. So you can see it's performing a little odd. And I think it's because we don't have this input pulled down. So let's pull it down. Now this one's already pulled down before it goes over the, uh, the blue. So the gray cable needs to be pulled down. So let's add that in. All right, let's try this again. Okay, so now it's working as intended. Right now we have two zeros, but we're looking for a one zero, right? We're looking for a one zero to turn on the LED. So we have zero zero right now. If we put one zero, then it does turn on. If we put zero one, it does not turn on. So this is working uh, perfectly. And again, the idea is that we're putting them into an AND gate and an AND gate only evaluates the true if all the operands are high or one or true or uh, whichever way you want to say it. So in this case, we want the one zero to prove true. So for that to happen, the one will put in directly into the gate, but the zero will flip through an inverter to make it into a one to allow the AND gate to evaluate the true. So one zero does work. Now what we have to do is take the output of these two and then check it with this guy to see if he's a one. And that should be the end of it. So it's pretty quick, I would say. This guy can be removed now and this guy can be removed. So this uh, AND gate has two inputs and then an output. And then it has two more inputs and another output. So we're going to take the output instead of going to our LED for our debugging. And we're just going to put it into the next guy as the as a new operand. So that's going to be one of these tiny little, little dudes here. And then this the other operand is, of course, this button here. So we just need to get a wire to come down here. This is too long. I don't like how that looks, but I don't know. All right, and then we need to pull him down too because he's not pulled down yet. So we need to pull down this uh, this input so that when the button is not being pressed, it, it's being grounded to zero. We're not letting it just float around between one or zero or we want it to be definite. Let me change this ground cable to a much shorter one for the inverter. Okay, and then the output of this can just go back to our LED. All right, so let's see if this works. So I'm gonna plug in power. So for our add circuit, right, if we're pretending that we have a processor and when it receives 101 in the instruction register, it's gonna perform the add operation, then we can pretend that this is our instruction and we have 101 here. And if we press both, it does activate. If we do any other combination, it does not activate. So this works perfectly. This is, we could say, an instruction decoder. So for every operation we have, in this case, add 101, we did that, move, let's say 110. So it would be the same thing that we that we do, and, and we could do it uh, together. So we want 110. So in this case, these two would go straight into the AND gates, right? But we'd have to do maybe these two AND gates here. And then the zero would need to go into the inverter, just like this other bit for the add bit pattern. So this bit would have to go in and flip to a one so that all three prove as one for the end gates. And this is a three bit pattern. You know, you could do a lot with that. that. That's what seven commands, six if you leave zero as a no action. So with three bits, we could control six different operations. And man, that's uh, that's no joke. You know, that's a pretty decent start to have a very simple kind of processor that can handle six commands. Uh, so let's do another one. So let's do the move, was it? One, one, zero. So we need to, I guess, put these over here and, and connect them in. So we want a 110 to launch our move command. So what I'm going to do is plug up power and I'm going to put in like a blue color or something. I'll just add it in from now as our output. So this will be our move operation. This will signal when the move operation is being uh, performed. So we have our add and our move. And let's see. So we want a 110. So we have two more. No, sorry, this is a hex inverter. So we have a bunch of inverters here. We have, I guess, one, two, three, four that we're not using, five that we're not using. And then the AND gates, we have uh, two that we're not using. One, two, uh, sorry, input, input, output, input, input, output. And I think that perfectly aligns with what we're doing here. So we can add one more operation with these little chips that we have. Uh, so let's do that. So one, one, zero is what we need. So we know that we want our one to go into this. Sorry, no, we want the one to go straight into the AND gate. So this has to be longer. Yeah. All right, so this one is going to go into this AND gate. So we have a one. 
This one's also going to be a one. So that one can also go right next door. So if one, if these are both ones, then this uh, output, this AND gate output will evaluate to a one. And then we need to combine it with this guy, but he needs to be a zero. So we need to flip him to a one. And then we can combine him with this output. And we'll have when one, 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 one is true, that's when it executes. So this output, we could just put a little jumper. So we go straight into the next AND gate as another operand. And then this guy, we need to flip to a zero and then put him in. So I guess we can just, I guess up here is probably the, the best thing to do just for clarity. Does this work? I think it does work. So this is our zero for the move operation. So the zero is going to go into the, to the inverter. And then the output is just going to go into this final operand here. And that should be it. I think this will work. Right, we want we want one one zero to set off this move operation over here, this light. So we have one and one, right, into this AND gate. One and one should make one. So this one's gonna carry into the next operand. And then the zero, we can't put directly in here, right? Because one and zero would fail. It would give us zero output. We want it to be a one output. So instead we flip him first, the zero to a one, and then that will go in here. So then one and one will make a one, and then that will light up our LED. And if you're wondering, well, what if we pressed it and it was a one, will it give us a false positive? But the, no, because the one is going to be flipped to a zero in that case. And this would be a one zero if the rest of the code is, uh, matches and it gives us a zero output. Let's do it. So let's put this guy into the output properly and then put the LED in. And let's test our, our, our decoder now. Now that we're decoding against two different things. I don't think I pulled down one of the inputs. So let's see if that creates a problem for us. So add is one zero one. That works still. One one zero does not seem to work. So I guess we need to pull down one of these inputs. Maybe that's what's creating the problem. I guess it's the one that's being inverted that needs to be pulled down. So let us just add a pull down resistor right in there to make sure that when this button is not being pressed, then this pin is able to get a true zero because right now it seems to be getting some sort of in-between voltage maybe. This uh, 10K is not trimmed, but that's fine for now. So let's just, so 101 for add does work. 110 for move does not, still doesn't work. Wow. What is going on? Not sure. All right, I found out why this guy was not working. His pin is messed up. It's like he's a little ant with a messed up leg. So I'm going to straighten this out and see if that fixes it. It should. A lot of these guys are kind of messed up. I guess we have to be really careful about how these go in. So let me try and correct these guys. Let's try this again and see. That's back in. Let's plug in power. So 101 should activate our add command, which it does. So you can imagine this is the instruction coming into the CPU. He looks at it. He wants to know what to do. He sees 101, boom. He adds whatever is in the registers or whatever operands he has. And then 110 is move. So he looks at it and boom, move operate. So this works now. Wonderful. So we can see how uh, just by changing the bit pattern, we can affect what circuits are being turned on and off. And the idea here would be like, we have our adder over here from before, uh, from one of the last videos. And we can have we have our inputs here and we have our outputs. So I guess you could say that, you know, if these were preloaded uh, registers to binary patterns, to values, then we'd really only want the circuit to be adding when the add instruction is being recognized. So maybe we could wire this up a way to do that. I didn't plan this at all. So maybe it's not so practical, but we would need to essentially turn off the power to uh, this circuit only allow it to be powered when this guy's on. So I don't really know how I'll do that easily. So I think I'll wait for the next one and we can hook it up to our adder. 
and try to get that going or do the move like a memory type controller uh, next. So this is our instruction uh, decoder. We can see how we could just have these buttons going to, I guess, six of these and having six different operations being decoded at once where we'll be able to control six different implementations just with these three. So if we double this to six, then it just becomes that much more uh, capable. So I'm going to leave it here and connect this up next time to get the adder working where we can put in some numbers as if we digitally populated a register, let's say zero two registers, so that we can pretend that we put the value in. And then when we input the add opcode, then we'll have the add actually take place and export it. And I guess this will be kind of like the first step into a CPU because we'll be able to put in an input somewhere that's dynamic, that can have multiple inputs and have it actually create a sum of two values in a register. So that'll be really cool.